Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining. My name is Patrick O'Grady and this is IELTS Hanoi. Today, I think we've got a really good lesson for you. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at the whole of the speaking test, parts one, two, and three. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the topic of influence and who influenced your life. We've got a really great guest. Her name is Miss Hun, and uh, sorry, Miss Hun. She recently did her IELTS. She scored an 8.0 or maybe an 8.5. I'm not too sure. She did really well, and well, I've I've already heard her answers. We recorded this earlier, and uh, she's really strong. She gives very uh, a, a lot of great answers. So we'll, let's let's listen, shall we? Let's do it. Hi there, good afternoon. Please come in, have a seat, please. Uh, my name is Patrick O'Grady, and today I'm going to be your examiner. Can you tell me your full name, please? My name is Bui Quynh Hun. I see. And what should I call you? Um, you can call me Hun. Miss Hun. Great. Miss Hun, uh, could you give me your identification, please? Um, here you are. Okay, very good. Huh. Great. Thank you very much. Now, Miss Hun, today I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself, okay? Okay. Great. Uh, I'd like to start by asking about your hometown. Can, wh where's your hometown situated? Well, my hometown is located in the north of Vietnam. It is in the heart of the North Delta. Mm -hmm. My hometown is actually the capital of Vietnam as well. I see. Very good. What's the population? Hmm. Well, I have to say that my hometown is very heavily populated. Um, I don't, I'm not sure about the exact number, maybe uh, for millions or something like that, but it has a feeling that is very crowded. I see, very good. What's your favorite, I'm sorry, what's your favorite part of Hanoi? Well, even though, as I've said before, Hanoi is a very crowded city, but um, there are still parts of it that, uh, that still feel very peaceful and uh, there, there are still lots of historical monuments there. Uh, my favorite part of Hanoi is the the path around West Lake. Um, it has a lot of trees and very nice architecture and fresh air. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Um, do you think you'll always live in Hanoi? Hmm. I'm not very sure about my future plan yet, but uh, for the for the near future, I think that I'm not going to move anywhere because there's something in Hanoi that I feel cannot be replaced by any other city. I think you might be right. It's irreplaceable, yeah. this place. Very good. Well, I'd like to move on and talk about friendship. Do you spend more time with your friends or your family? Um, I'm not a very social person, so I don't have a lot of friends. But So most of the time, I just keep to my family, especially my mom. She's like a kind of best friend to me. Great. Um, do you talk, I'm sorry, what can you talk to your friends about but not your family? Well, there are still certain things that I cannot, cannot talk very comfortably with my family, but I can still talk with my friends, things like tests, studying, teachers, school life, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I see, I see. Do you prefer to have lots of friends or have a few close friends? Well, like I have said before, I'm not a very social person, so, mm -hmm. um, I like having a few close friends who I can share my deepest thought and who I can turn to when I have problems. Great. Um, now let's discuss some leisure. Um, tell me about a popular pastime in Vietnam. Well, in Vietnam nowadays, there's this new trend of um, smartphone obsession. Uh, people everywhere stare at their smartphone uh, using social network or playing games. Um, I think that is now becoming one of the most popular pastime in Vietnam, especially in urban areas. Mm -hmm. uh, why is it popular? Well, um, smartphone is very interesting, uh, especially with social networks and the internet. Um, it's, it provides you with a way to uh, to, to look into your friend's life without really actually being there with them. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, do you enjoy it too? 
Well, I have to say that I don't enjoy social network and smartphone as much as people around me. I prefer uh, I, I prefer actual connection, face-to-face -face conversation more. I see. Excellent. Thank you. Now let's move on to part two. I'd like to ask you to speak for one to two minutes on this topic. Um, please read the topic carefully. You have one minute to think about what you're going to say. Begin. Okay, that's one minute. You've got two minutes to give me your answer. Okay. Begin. Well, throughout my life, there are many people who influence me in one way or another, but the most Person, but the most recent person that I feel that influence on me is my best friend. Uh, I met her when I first entered high school. I remember that uh, that was when I uh, I come to my English class and I was looking for a desk mate. There she was. Uh, she was sitting alone, so I came and sit next to her. Um, at first, she was really quiet and there was not a lot of talking going on between us. But uh, when we got closer, um, we talked a lot to each other and I realized that we have many things in common. Um, we read the same type of books, watch the same types of movie, we, have, we both have an obsession for cats. Um, she, has, uh, she has had uh, an influence on me in, uh, in several aspects. Um, she helped me realize the the aesthetic value in things and people around me. Uh, by uh, by knowing her, I become more calm and mature. Um, I remember when I entered high school, I was um, I was an an impulsive person, but uh, she got a, she got away away with her. That is really calm, and it turned me into a more thoughtful and considerate person. Mm -hmm. mm. She also helped me to involve more in uh, social activity at school. Before I, I really don't, I really didn't care about what people did at school. But uh, when she came along and um, and she introduced me to activity at school, and I started to think that um, it was quite interesting and something that I'm still doing now. Excellent, thank you very much. <clears throat> Have you kept? Have you been able to keep in contact with this person? Well, unfortunately, she has just gone to the USA in last on last year October. So, but we still keep in contact with each other uh, via Facebook and uh, uh, texting. Uh, we usually text each other on Saturday night, and I still feel very. I'm. I'm still feeling very close to her. Excellent. Do you think it's important to keep in contact with people from your past? Well, of course, yes. I think that it's very important to keep in contact with close acquaintances, especially those who have such um, an influence on your life. Uh, also, other slight acquaintances is good to keep in contact with as well, because who knows, one day or another, they may, um, they may turn out to be helpful to you. Excellent. Great. Let's move on to part three of the test. Uh, we've been talking about people who influence our lives. I'd like to discuss with you one or two questions related to this. Can you describe a famous person from Vietnam's history? Well, um, <clears throat> throughout the life of Vietnam's history, there are many, there are many people who influence our, who influence our life. But uh, the most imminent figure in modern history of Vietnam is President Ho Chi Minh. Uh, I know that is kind of cliche because in Vietnam we are taught to respect and appreciate um, Uncle Ho's contribution to our country. But I really believe that um, uh, Uncle Ho played a great role in establishing Vietnam's independence um, in the 20th century. Uh, excellent. Uh... Can you evaluate the contribution of Uncle Ho? Uh, like I have said before, he has um, he has he has um, of, he has done great contribution to our country. Um, if thanks to Uncle Ho, now Vietnam is an independent nation, not the colony of uh, any other country. Um, 
Yes. Also, I think that Uncle Ho is the one who established all the um, all the political system that uh, Vietnam now that Vietnam is now seeing um, since the day that we earned our independence. Excellent. What kind of people are influential in? I'm sorry. What kind of people are influential in society? Mm, <clears throat> well, that's a bit hard to say. What the exact kind of person who are who who are influential in a in a society? I think that it's um, it's up to it's up to each age group. Uh, with the younger generation, then I believe that people like um, sports star or movie star, actor and actress uh, are influential. But with the older generation, I I think that they still they still uh, has a cling to the um, um, to politicians and uh, people that are famous in the past. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's been very interesting speaking with you, and I wish you the best of luck in your future. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay. So, what do you think? How'd she do? I thought she did really, really well. I think she did really well. Uh, I, uh, what I'd like to do now is go over what she did and tell you what I think she did, maybe, and, and highlight some vocabulary and some grammar, and, and uh, l let's do it now. As you remember, we always start out with part zero on the test. What's part zero? It's just that first introduction, that first little bit. Um, and I, I like to warn people about part zero because you don't want to start blah, blah, blahing, talking, talking right away. Just give yourself a couple, of, give yourself and the examiner a couple of minutes to go through it. Um, please, I, 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 as you remember, please take a seat. My name is Patrick O'Grady. What's your full name? Don't say your phone number. Um, what's your full name and what should I call you? All right, and remember to bring your identification. We finish that part and then we move on to part one of the speaking test. Uh, the first questions we asked her was about hometown and she did really well. She, uh, I asked her what, where's your hometown situated? A couple of vocabulary words she used. Uh, she talked about Hanoi being the capital of Hanoi, capital. Great vocab word. Um, she uh, also spoke about it being uh, the heart of the North, which I, I felt was very uh, poetic way to describe Hanoi. I liked it a lot. Good vocab. Uh, what is the population was the next question. Uh, she said it was heavily populated, a, a very good description of Hanoi. And I think she also called it crowded there in her answer there. And I think that's also a, a, a good vocabulary to talk about Hanoi. Um, the next question was, what's your favorite part of your hometown? And uh, I liked how she started it, though. Even though it's this, even though it's crowded, it's not, nobody likes it crowded, but even though she starts out with that, and uh, uh, she talks about it being peaceful, uh, historical, and she likes the architecture. Um, I don't know if I agree with her that uh, uh, Hanoi is peaceful, but uh, it's a, it, the, the way she uses it, it's very natural, flowing off her tongue, and she, she did quite well with that. Nice relaxed answer, and uh, it doesn't have to be true. The examiner doesn't have to agree with you. They just have to, uh, they just want to hear that English, yeah? So the fourth question I asked her, in part one, uh, do you think you will always live in your hometowns, in your hometown, excuse me? Uh, she wasn't sure about her, fu uh, her future plans. She's not 100% sure about it, but she gave me a nice, nice explanation. In the near future, she thinks that uh, it cannot be replaced. Good answer. Let's talk about friendships. Uh, question five, do you spend more time with your friends or family. Um, she did a nice paraphrasing here where she talks about uh, not being very social. And uh, so it's kind of a, a nice lead into her saying, well, no, I'm, I don't really have a lot of friends. I'm, I'm hanging out with my family a lot. And that's, uh, that's where I enjoy spending my time. And so uh, again, great answer. In the next question, I asked her, what can you talk to your friends about, but not your family? And 
I expected her to say something, uh, some secrets or something. Maybe she can't tell her her, her, her mom, but she, she, no, there's nothing. She she seems, uh, she answered the question that she's closer to her, she's very close to her, her, her family and she could talk to her family about anything. So <clears throat> you don't have to uh, answer the way the examiner expects or maybe the way the examiner is thinking Give, give your own best answer, and it's, uh, it's always best to tell the truth. Um, I, I think that you will remember things better if you're, if, if you're telling the truth. So that's my little tip for today. Uh, the next question I asked her was, do you prefer having lots of friends or a few close friends? Um, we kind of already knew the answer. She, was, she wants to have a couple of close friends. But I like the vocabulary she used here. She talks about uh, her, her deep thoughts and uh, what was the other one? Um, she can turn to this close friend when she has a problem. But nice, uh, nice way of putting the sentences together. I, I thought it was sharp. The third set of questions I, I asked was on leisure. And uh, what was the question? Tell me about a popular pastime in Vietnam. And uh, she talked about the smartphone being a bit of an obsession. People are kind of crazy about the smartphone, and I think she's absolutely right. People are crazy about it. So, um, excellent. And I also liked how she was answering these, particularly here, I felt she was answering quite confidently. She was very relaxed with this, so she's doing well. Why is it popular? Uh, I, I, I felt she answered it well again. She f people feel connected when they're not there, uh, and it provides uh, this and that. Good vocab. And the next, final question I asked in part one was, do you enjoy it too? And her answer was not really. She prefers, prefers to be face to face, right next to a, a person, as opposed to playing around on the internet. So great answers. Um, we moved on to, to part two of the test, and let's go through the question first. I'll read it out. You can read along with me. Describe a person who has influenced your life. You should say who this person is, how and when you met them, how you feel about this person, and explain how this person has influenced your life. So she had one minute to answer this. And you can see the answer, her answers. Let's go through what she said, what she wrote down here. We've got high school, friend, E-class, quiet, close, talk to, things common, influence, aesthetic value. Ooh, that's good vocab there. Calm and mature, great. Um, Really good notes. Probably the only thing I would uh, change here is instead of writing high school, maybe she could have written HS, high school. She doesn't need to write the full set, uh, uh, words, I think, for this. I think she's going to remember it. Um, but everything else was, was really strong, really well written. Um, so let's go through her answer for part two. One of the things she did was, <clears throat> sorry, a very common way to answer part two is to kind of mirror the question, re-paraphrase the question. Um, and, and so the, you, you might hear people say, for, for this question, you might hear people say, today I'm going to talk about someone who influenced my life. Okay, all right, that's good. Or there are some people who have influenced my life, but this person was really special. Okay, again, these are good. Um, I really like how she started it with, she said, throughout my life, a number of people have influenced, uh, influenced me, and I thought it was really sharp. Um, she goes through a whole bunch of different reasons, uh, of, of things that she talks about when she talks. Let's go through the questions and see if she answers, uh, answers them. Describe a person who has influenced your life. Does she describe the person? I think she does, yeah. Um, who is this person? Yeah, her friend, yeah, good. Uh, how and when they met? Yeah, they met at school and uh, she was sitting alone, I seem to remember. Uh, how do you, how you feel about this person? Oh, she, she seems to really like this person a lot. She, she gave a lot of uh, positive things about it. 
and explain how this person has influenced your life. And for sure, she, uh, she answered all of that quite well. Let's go through maybe a couple of uh, vocabulary words that she used that I, I felt were quite good. Uh, she talks about having an obsession with cats. Really like that obsession, really crazy about something, like it a whole bunch. Um, an appreciation for an artistic aesthetic, super difficult vocabulary word. I can barely say it myself. Appreciation for artistic aesthetic. Tough, tough, tough. And uh, beautiful. Um, do you, so what does that mean? It means that she appreciates artistic things. Uh, so very nice. Um, so she answered part two very well. She answered for the full two minutes. She had a couple of vocabulary words and she did great. Then there were a couple of uh, follow-up questions. Have you been able to keep in contact with this person? And uh, how, I'm sorry, do you think it's important to contact, to keep in contact with people from your past? And she, she gave great answers there. There's no, nothing to... Uh, uh, comment on there. I do want to comment on a couple of things about part three. Um, and particularly, I liked her vocabulary. She really went into high gear and, with part three and, and really showed off some great skills. Uh, the first question was, describe a famous person from your country. And yeah, you know, an, an eminent uh, figure. Uh, it's cliche to talk about uh, 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 Uncle Ho, but here's the thing, you know a lot, you, you the home viewer probably know a lot about Uncle Ho as well and talk about something that you know that you're comfortable with. That's what she did and it was great. Um, and once, let's go over the vocabulary a little bit more. Eminent, eminent being very high level person. This is uh, someone who's very important to, to uh, uh, kind of royalty, you might say. Um, he was. Uh, I heard a little bit of a pronunciation problem with in part three. I think she was talking. I think she was talking about a figure, an eminent figure. And it sounded like she was saying finger, finger. It did not uh, affect understanding at all. But a little bit. It sounded a little like a, a pronunciation mistake. Uh, cliche, cliche. Great vocabulary word meaning it's almost expected where we ex it's almost expected to say it and, and may maybe we could find something better but again she's speaking about something that she's comfortable with and that's great um the next question i asked her was can you evaluate the contribution of, of this famous person and she did really well. She, uh, she talked about establishing an ideology, an ideology. Establishing mean kind of uh, not creating, but really making it a central part of something. Establishing uh, uh, the ideology, the mindset of, of communism and what's central to the, what's central to Vietnam's ideology, the way Vietnam thinks today. It was brought about by Uncle Ho. So, uh, great vocabulary. She really nailed it there. Excellent stuff. Great. Well, that's all we got for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit the subscribe button down below. Share it with your friends and family. Give us a like and make a, or you could even make a comment and or you could even make a comment. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.